Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Anfield Index podcast. It's episode 328, I've been reliably informed, and it is 7.07, I've also been reliably informed. That is because I have not one, not two, but three tremendous guests on this evening um, who are obviously our go-tos on this particular show. It's nice to have the whole team together. Uh, I have with me tonight Cam Branch, Lisa Marie Hanahan, and Carl Kopak. And as I said before, in case you weren't paying attention or you don't know who the hell I am, my name's Trev Downey and I am podcasting to you as I always do from my field here in beautiful rural Ireland, which may account for some of the sketchy signal. If the sound is a little bit um, less than optimal, I can only apologise. I already apologised to people when I was on the far side of the country uh, with far better Wi-Fi, literally in the wilderness. Uh, and here I am now back in semi um semi uh, 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 civilization and no such luck but anyway let's get started and we'll see how we go I have nothing to offer by way of intro that is because as uh, the lads will know here I've been um, quite distracted with uh, family stuff of late and away as well into the bargain so I didn't want to just force something and nothing occurred to me during the week and all it's only stuff that occurs to me during the week that I use nothing really did I've been kind of very much keeping away from all that stuff that said I've got two football pods done the last two days this is number three so we're very much back in mode now and with that in mind Um, There are a few topics I want to get through with um, the three amigos here, but before that, let's just get a word from everyone because it has been a minute since we did one of these all together and see how everyone's getting on. Uh, Like I said, I'm recently returned from a a week in the West, Cambridge. Have you been uh, on the road again, my friend? Uh, No, I, I, oh, hello everyone, sorry. No, I'm no longer on the road. Um, change of uh, employment status um uh-huh. so, uh, i uh, started a, a new position on monday what uh, what happened was when i was on the road i had a bit of a bit of a big accident and uh, it was a bit of a wake-up call i had a 20 ton lorry going to the back of me and that scared the bejesus out of me and i thought no more of this no more getting up at 3 30 in the morning got online applied for jobs had a job interview on the Thursday before I went to Paris. Thursday night was offered the position, started on Monday. Um, and right now, I have no idea if I'm in work tomorrow or not because they haven't told me. So, hey ho, there you go. That's what it is. Oh. All fun and games. All fun and games. So, uh, it's going to be a lot for me now. It's going to be more late nights and weekend work, unfortunately. But I just had to get out of the driving. I couldn't do it anymore. It was just wearing me out too much. So, that sounds go. like an absolute shocker. Yeah, that sounds like an absolute shocker, man. The the, yeah. the accident. Um, uh, I, I I I'm I'm going to go ahead out on a limb here and assume that you're doing okay physically. You didn't get any injuries, did you? Um, I had a bit. Uh, I had a few. I had quite a few headaches afterwards. Um, I started developing more ringing in the ears. I mean, I I had slight issues with my ears anyway because obviously I'm hard of hearing, wear hearing aids, but um. And I've never really had tinnitus, so but I do know what it is. I've had it occasionally, but now it's just pretty much now I'm talking about it, it it's there. You know, as soon as I mention it and think about it, it's there. As soon as I take my mind off it, it's not there. It's one of those now. It's just going to be there. So um, let's just say the ball is in motion on that side of things anyway. So um, um, took some legal advice and they they've 
well, obviously they said they're always going to see not solicitors like always a case there, isn't there? Regardless of whether there yeah, is or isn't. Yeah, of course, so, of course. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um, yeah, but you know, we'll we'll see what happens on that side of things. So yeah, I completely wrote wrote the van off. So um, I I thought there was a fire in the van at one point. So um, because the uh, Oh, airbag yeah. on the seatbelt had gone off. So I mean, I could go on forever. I mean, we've got a podcast to record. Nobody wants to hear of my uh, my troubles. Let's 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 uh, let's get some better news. How's uh, Lisa Marie and a uh, young copac doing? Uh, I, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. I understand. I understand you're traumatized, but that does not make you the host of the show. I'll do. The, I'll do the asking <laughs> around here. Thank you very much, uh, dude. Really sorry to hear that. Wow, what a what a dramatic. Uh, what a dramatic interlude to have to endure. All, all, all the best with the new job. I, for one, Thank will you. never mention tinnitus again so that you are not aware of it or thinking about <laughs> it. We'll try, and, we'll try and distract you on the show with our Thank usual you. nonsense. Uh, but as Cam rightly was steering the ship in that direction, let's get round to uh, our other two contributors and just say hello as well. Lisa Marie, we heard you laughing away there. How are you getting on this week? Uh, it's been a while. Uh, it has been a while. I've I've missed you lads tremendously. I really have. Um, it's, it's been a week. Um, you know, it, my, I, I now officially have a teenage daughter this week. So that's, that's been the big news in the Hanahan household. So all the daughter best, turned all 13 the best. and I will take all your thoughts and prayers moving forward. <laughs> everyone. Thank you very much. You need it. Yeah. Um, to be fair, she's <laughs> a teenager. A she's five. Voice the what? Sorry, I'm just, I'm just laughing at Cam saying you'll need it in a very cynical voice in the background. <laughs> I've got a 15 year old. I've, I've had two teenage daughters prior to that. I was going to say, he's experienced. He needs he all the miracles she can get. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, um, but you know, honestly, she's been a teenager since she was five. I'm not going to lie to you. So it's not really. That's true. Not well. that <laughs> just official now. No, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a week, I suppose, and uh, yeah, it's been hotter than front porch in hell um, here in lovely Middle Tennessee, but that's summer. Um, although I think we're supposed to get a little bit of a, a bit of a cool off here for the next couple of days, so that will be most welcome. I heard some news during the week about Tennessee, uh, and I said I must ask Lisa Marie about that on the show. And I have forgotten completely. Like I've forgotten every. I I am. I swear to God, I just I decided to take the week off, and I did not understand that my brain would take that as I don't do anything now, and that's exact. I have been as dumb as shit all week. I have been just the ridiculous. Defined Elvis, Fred. Hey, the defined Elvis was that the news. No, they didn't find out. It definitely wasn't that one. No, no, it wasn't that one. It was just something of of, of note. And I said, I must ask Lisa, but no, it's gone like everything else over the last <laughs> few weeks. But hopefully I'll get back in the Omega 3 oils and hopefully I'll sort myself out. Uh, Carl Kopak, do you take Omega 3 oils? I, uh, yeah, yeah, because, uh, well, not as much as I used to because of Taekwondo and my advancing years. And of course, everything's got to be, the joints have got to be liquid and smooth and flow like water. Um, I am mostly water these days because of that. But um, yeah, I don't mind an omega three. Of course, I worked in the fishing industry for a while as well, so you need to hear about your pelagic species, um, Trev. Then, then I'm very much your man here. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I get you to wear pelagic. I'm very happy with that. I, I'm delighted that we got pelagic in there, but I'd also like a the the elevator pitch uh, of your time in the fishing industry. What do you mean by that? I worked for, uh, it's, not, it's no longer a, a going concern, sadly, a, a newspaper called Fishing News. The commercial, the voice of the commercial fishermen since 1912, I think it was, off the top of my head. So, uh, Fantastic. I'm on my way around the maritime. Of, uh, <laughs> you're, rolling yeah. your, you're rolling your shoulders as you speak, aren't you? A bit of killy bags, mate. <laughs> killy bags. Yeah. For the win. That is, that is yeah. tremendous. I've been to the, uh, the Irish Skipper Conference in Galway four times, I think I went. Wow. And I've got, I only know Galway because of that. You'd have been right at home where I was this week, which is down in Ackle, uh, which is right on the very west coast of Ireland, next stop, America. And I, within, a, within a couple of kicks of a ball of me was at least three different little piers uh, and all the fishermen that reside thereabouts. Uh, it's, a, it's a hell of a pace of life uh, down there. I do like it, I have to say. I would recommend it to anyone. Um, 
but maybe not too many if you maybe just leave it alone uh, in your masses. But uh, it is a hell of a place to be. And I wanted to get into a football topic early uh, so that we can see where we take it from there. And of course, the only real story, and it's got various levels of tedium attached to it for all of us is the is the comings and goings that's what summer's about isn't it let's be honest um and i thought if we did it in this show at the start then maybe we could sort of draw some sort of uh, imaginary line under it and not have to talk about it unless there's something specific to talk about. Uh, hopefully you'll all be amenable to that. Because since we last did a show together, there has been um, some major news in terms of, of incomings and outgoings. But mostly it's all about the outgoings now. And the, the big the big one, of course, is Sadio Mane. And we all saw all the, the tributes floating in. We saw Sadio's words. We were... At various stages, uh, appalled, horrified, uh, aghast, disappointed, sad, and some people just pleased for the lad himself to get a move that he clearly wanted at this point in his career, having certainly owes us nothing, having been such a great servant. I did the transfer show, which, I mean, lads, can I just get this on the record? I am now hosting a transfer show. That's disappointed, Trev. I'm oh, disappointed. I can't. I can't. I, I, I've, I literally, I, I, I can't explain to you how amazed I am to find myself in this situation. But I'm doing it with a very nice lad called uh, Dave Davis, and uh, Dave's very uh, up on this and knowledgeable. So we've had a we had, the breakfast secretary. No, not David Davis. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's Dave Davis. Uh, oh, so, so he's no, no. <laughs> It's it's a totally different thing. This I went to with David Davis. This is this is totally different uh, 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 markets we're talking about here. And, and 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 Dave's very knowledgeable, so we work away on it. And I'm looking forward to doing it from that point of view because most of the heavy lifting is done by him, and I just react to things and ask the daft questions like the uh, like the daft host I am. But we do need to talk about what's happening at the moment because it looks if one is to believe Joycey, as if there's not going to be a huge amount more by way of incomings, and we all had our hearts set on a midfielder, I think. I'm right in saying that. We'll, we'll, we'll get your, canvas your opinions mm-hmm. on that in a second. Um, because there is a specific question I want to ask you about that. But just let's talk about the way it looks like it's going at the moment. It looks like we're losing um, Taki Minamino. It seems to be almost done. Maybe it was done this afternoon. I don't know. I think it is done, actually. I think it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be Monaco shirt, so. Oh, there you go. So yeah. Taki's gone to, to Monaco. I think the rumour is around 15 million. Um, Nico Williams is definitely on his way out. It looks like Forrest are favourites. Fulham, I think, of interest as well. Um but, don't go there, lads. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, I mean, they're reasonably well set up at the moment, that club, to be fair. Uh, so, it, and, and when you look at, like I did with Dave earlier on, the uh, promoted clubs are probably best fixed to stay. But anyway, we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll get that. But I just I want to give everyone a chance to talk about that. Anything at all to do with outgoings or incomings or anything like that that hits you. But can we just start with uh, just to get on the record? I don't want any mawkish nonsense and wallowing and and, and any any of that because it's it's gone. It's done. He's gone. Uh, he's done. But just a take on the outgoing Sadio in particular. And let's go in reverse order. Carl, I mean, like, for me, Sadio is probably the key player of the Klopp era to date, just because of his consistency across that period and his record in getting incredibly important goals. And, like, he was always on. Even when he wasn't playing well, he was always giving 100%. And for me, that made him... He's got to be right up there. Uh, it's it, it's it's a big loss and a very unique kind of mercurial talent that you don't replace easily, Carl. I, I wrote um, about him last week, and I think, uh, um, you know, uh, as, as I said at the time, it, there's a these things are always washed in in controversy when you say. But I think there was a time for two years when he's the best player in the world, and I, I don't shirk from that. And you know. There's always, you know, is it Messi, is it Ronaldo? But I think there's a time when Sadio Mane just couldn't be touched. And it's not just the 120 goals or anything like that. It's his attitude on the pitch. Mo Salah comes in and you could think, 
He'd have his nose pushed out of the joint because it's Mo Salah. He's getting 40 goals in his first season. So none of it. So not a breath of scandal. His attitude was perfect. Um, and 120 goals is incredible over a six-year period. The, the golden boot, um, I I think it's the right time for him to go because I think it's not just... I mean, people say, you know, and, and, and again, I wrote this, it's not just about money for him because his money seems to go to his village in Senegal anyway. And if Bayern Munich want to foot that bill for someone in their 30s, then fair enough. If Don't get me wrong, if Sadio had said I want another four years here, I personally would have done it because I think he's worth it. I think he is... I don't, the, the problem with being a Liverpool fan sometimes, if, if you look at things like all-time 11s, is who the hell are you pushing out to get someone in? So I try not to think about that. And I'm quite keen on left side of people at, uh, at Liverpool from yesteryear, Trevor, as you know. Um, but um, he's got to be worth a shot for the 11, isn't he? I mean, I, I just think he, he is he personifies the club here for me. He's just an astonishing footballer and an even better human being. Just an, and, and yeah. I, 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 a genuine Liverpool legend, complete legend. I I was looking at I was looking at some some stories about um, where Sadio's various funds go to in terms of the facilities and services that he's providing for his village and the growth of that village and the advancement of the people within it and I mean I'm sorry but that is that's an actual superhero right there what he's doing for those people. That's remarkable. In and of itself, that's remarkable. And like yeah, you give said, give me a minute, and I'll find the breakdown of what he's done. Yeah, um, I, I saw it myself somewhere there recently. It's it's absolutely fantastic. You please do go and find that because it, it it's worth it's worth calling out. And like, I mean, you can't hold everyone to those kind of standards, but to see someone like that doing something like that when you've got all these other um, so-called philanthropists giving their money to very specific little things that will probably back channel what back wants, to them eventually. What wants as well. I mean, that's the thing. Not that I'm knocking anyone who does that. Gareth no, Bell, it's not. No, no, no. Gareth Bell's just done a load of stuff, for, you know, for, for, for the Cardiff area. So I think, yeah, I don't know something like that. Um, I've got it here. Um, if, I, if I can quote myself, in February, he donated half a million pounds to build a hospital in his home village of Bambali. I apologise if I didn't pronounce that incorrectly. He'd already given 41 grand to help ease the COVID problem in Senegal and a further quarter of a million to a secondary school. In 2018, he gave away 300 Liverpool shirts to his village so they could enjoy the 2018 European Cup final. Imagine being the only Man United fan in Mount Bali. I mean, it's... it's but there's uh, more. Uh, yeah, and, and if the thing is, like, you know, it, you could just say, oh, look, he gave some money to charity, but he went back and did it again. And uh, as I said, footballers look after their friends and family. Sadio looks after a village. Yeah, I mean, like, and, you know, may, I'm not maybe, knocking him, but, money. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's it was tied up in the COVID thing, but I read as well that there's almost like a little mini stipend for every family in the village as well of what? like a certain amount of, of 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 per week as well. I mean, it's it's absolutely outrageous, uh, in the best possible sense of that word, and 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 and, and heroic in the best possible sense of that word. So I have to say, it really stuck in my craw when I saw some of the negativity around his departure, and the manner of it, and what people perceived to be the manner of it. I mean, honestly, he could he he could have gone out shouting over his shoulder, and it wouldn't diminish one bit all the wonderful stuff he's done for the club, and. I want to bring in uh, Lisa Marie and 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 and, uh, and Cam to have a chat about this as well. But let me just frame this up before I bring you two guys in. In that, like, confirm Liverpool departures. We should just say this: it's not just Sadio Mane. It's the, that's the big one. Well, we said it looks very likely that Nico Williams is on his way. Taki Minamino, we've already mentioned, is gone. But also, Divock Origi, Loris Karius, Shea Ojo, Ben Woodburn, Elijah Dixon Bonner. Lewis Longstaff, Sean Wilson, and Connor Bradley, an awful lot of whom have had a minute or two in the first team, all of whom at various points were hugely highly rated, some of whom have had massive, massive moments with the first team um, for good and bad. Uh, that's a big change of personnel um, out. Uh, and when you look at Mr. Manny at the top of that list, it's a, it's a bit of a sea change. So we're kind of hoping, aren't we, uh, that we're gonna we we will be able to replace that uh, with several uh, new boys. But again, just to frame it up before I bring Cam and Lisa Marie in for their say, our incomings are Darwin Nunes for 
you know, the much controversial fee that people don't understand the breakdown of, Fabio Carvalho and Calvin Ramsey. And in in that order, you'd imagine they have an opportunity of getting first team appearances. Nunes will want to be a starter, we assume he will be. Uh, Carvalho may or may not make it into the first team on a semi-regular basis. And Calvin Ramsey surely won't. So, have we done enough? That's the question. Feel free to talk about Sadio if you want, Cam, but do answer that question eventually for me, will you? Um, I'll start with Sadio. Um, I'm really sorry he's gone. Um, I would have loved for him to sign a new contract and stay. Um, I've stayed away from social media um, because it's too painful to see. It, it really genuinely hurts me seeing all the stuff about Sadio and him no longer being a Liverpool player. So I've I've just stayed away from it. I just can't bring myself to watch any of it. Um, it's not, for me, Torres' levels of um, hurt um, because that was a completely different kettle of fish. But he, he's, he's a Liverpool legend. He's a wonderful person, wonderful human being. Amazing football player. An amazing, amazing, amazing football player. Um, he was so right for for what we were about when we signed him. He was the perfect first signing for Klopp or first major signing for Klopp. Um, personified everything that Klopp wanted from everybody else. And he almost set the standard. He set the tone. And I can't believe you slugged off Stephen Colker there. That's why. I, that's why. That's why I caveated it with major signing. Big <laughs> <laughs> big corks was on your head there, wasn't he? Yeah, I forgot about Corker, but Corker was only on loan, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah, so uh, you, you, you've got to give me that one, Carl. I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, so so for 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 me, Sadio leaving it, it it was a sad day, but. The club is bigger than any one player. We always have said that. We we all know that. Um, we support the eleven on the pitch and the, the the gazillion on the bench now. And whoever comes on is is who we're shouting and screaming for to do well. So um, you know, it's a new chapter for him. It's a new chapter for us now because obviously we we've not just replaced him with one player. I think we've actually replaced him with two players. And I think people are possibly losing sight of that a little bit. I mean, because it, it's not just Nunes is coming. I still think Diaz is coming now. He's just had his pre-season with us. So he'll be ready to go for next season. So we, we've got, we've, we've literally had to replace one player with two. If you look at it like that, I know Divock's gone and, and Divock's a legend for what he did in the finals and the goals against theirs. And, you know, for having the greatest Liverpool goal ever scored, according to the club and, and you know, uh, everyone who voted. So Divock will be a legend for different reasons and we wish him well wherever he ends up. I think it's AC Milan, it looked like he was going to. Um, and But Divock didn't really play minutes this year. Whereas going forward, Nunes and Diaz are the future. So we know they're going to be playing a lot of minutes for us. We know that they're going to be Eventually, we're going to have a new front three of Diaz, Nunes and Jota. You know, Bobby and Mo will slowly, slowly be, you know, and I'll come, I'm, I might come to Mo later. Um, but so, um, so yeah, so as for the other signings, I think Carvalho is the uh, Minamino replacement, but more of a future will be more of a player for us. He, he's got so much to offer from what little I've seen of him in the championship. And, you know, we know the club were looking to sign him in January and didn't quite pull it off. So I think it's a fantastic signing from what I have seen of him. Um, the the lad Aaron, Aaron Ramsey from uh, Aberdeen that we signed, again, he's another one that looked like he could be a player. He's also got... Calvin. Um, sorry, sorry Cal- oh. Calvin, not Aaron Ramsey. Sorry, Ramsey. Calvin, my apologies. Uh, no, I say that because I've done the same myself this week, talking about the young lad Aaron Ramsey, who's 34 or something. Yeah, it's just, I, I'm i so used to hearing that name, Aaron Ramsey. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Um, sorry, everyone, for that. Um, but yeah, Calvin Ramsey, apparently, um, not only can he play right back, but he there's possibility of, he could push up 
and possibly play as a wide eight as well. So that's, you know, that's nice that, you know, um, he could develop and possibly be another one who could come into the midfield as well as um, give Trent a rest at right back. Um, the other players that you've mentioned are leaving Nico. I wish him all, all, all the best in the world. Um, possibly he was not, I don't think he was good enough personally from what I'd seen of him to be playing a back four. I think he was more of a um, a wing back type player. And obviously we don't play that. So when he was playing at Fulham, he was playing as a wing back and he was having a lot of success there. So that might be one of the reasons the club have decided, yeah, you know, you're probably not best suited for us and uh, good luck wherever he ends up. As for all the other lads you mentioned, I just wish them nothing but good luck and success going forwards. And Lisa Marie, to bring you in on this, there is another person I should have mentioned and didn't, who's uh, Nat Phillips, um, who I think an awful lot of people were excited to see what he contributed when he had to. Um, possibly his reputation elevated itself beyond possibly even what Nat is as a as a footballer and then like i said to dave davis earlier on the show all the amateur accountants were out saying uh, now's the time to sell and they were probably right you know they were probably right uh now it doesn't seem as if he's quite such a hot property anymore um and it there's rumors of another loan um at bournemouth which Again, like I said, for those people who obsess about the money, will frustrate the bejesus out of them. So maybe a word on that, Phillips, from you, because I know you he's been part of, of your time as a supporter. But clearly, you haven't either known a Liverpool uh, team without Sadio Mane. So this is uh, going to be a major culture shock for you. Yes. Uh, you know, like like everyone, I, I hate to see Sadio go um you know and i i understand from his perspective you know from what he has said in his interviews you know why you know he wants to move on and, and i respect that um carl i do want to say that your article was fantastic i really really enjoyed it this week and i i think i mentioned that to you on twitter as well but it was if you haven't read carl's article please go seek it out because it was it was beautiful oh, jokes. <laughs> But no, I think what we're going to miss the most about Sadio or what I personally am going to miss the most about him is that that ability he had to drag a win over the line for us. I mean, especially in that league winning season, he could just you could almost feel him willing us to victory. Um, You know, if if a player could win this game single handedly, you know, in this team sport, I, I think there were there were some games where he certainly ground that you know, was able to grind that win out for us. So I, I think that's, I think that's something we're going to miss more than maybe we know. Um, interesting to see who maybe kind of steps into that sort of on field, that type of leadership role on the, on the field. And then as for our outgoings, I'm going to miss Tacky, I think the most, I, I mean, in addition to Sadio, there's just something, I, there's just something about Tacky that I just enjoyed watching him play just, just so much so but I do I'm you know I think he was unfortunate and when he came into the team um you know just before COVID hit and everything else I think that probably hampered him a little bit so I'm just happy to see him you know get a move to a place where you know he will hopefully get a lot more playing time and be able to you know to showcase his his abilities in a you know more than he's been able to you know for Liverpool although I mean I, I, I know the stat has gone around multiple places multiple times that he was the he scored the most goals for us in, in the cups this season. So yay tacky. Who else? Who yeah, about? yeah. Nico. And, and that, that... <laughs> Go through the list. I should have written it down. Um, yeah. Ne- you know, Nico is if, if Harvey Elliott's my fourth child, I think Nico's been my fifth child. Um, I've always kind of had a little mother protective mama bear role for him, um, especially when people have tended to attack him for things you know for not being Trent I know I've mentioned that more than one occasion um I honestly think that that's been his biggest um cross to bear is he was not Trent and when he would step in for right back for Trent he's not Trent he's not in as um I think Cam just said he was you saw him do 
much better at Fulham as a wing back. I think that's what he usually plays for the Welsh team as well. And he's just, you know, I think those systems are just suited better to him. So wherever he ends up, you know, I wish him well also. Um, as for the new lads, is it all right for me to move on there? <laughs> Of course, yeah, of course, of course, of course. And actually, and actually, you can go, you can go quite quickly here on this because I want to start the next little section yeah. here with you. So, just of the, the 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 new arrivals, obviously, we're all excited to see what Nunes can do for us, and we're all hopeful, and 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 some people far more bullish than others. Um, but probably the most exciting one for me because I've seen just enough to make make me very very interested in seeing if he can make the jump is 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 Carvalho what do you reckon the likelihood is of minutes in the team for him this year you know I don't know I mean I, it may it could very well depend on you know what happens injury wise you know across especially in the midfield yeah, yeah. Is kind of what I'm, I'm thinking now, you know, he and Harvey Elliott played together, you know, previously in their, you know, youth teams at Fulham. So that, you know, that could be interesting too, to see if there's a way to pair them up somehow. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm really a little more interested in preseason than I have been, I think before, just because I want to see how some of these new players, you know, I mean, and I know preseason is a time where they kind of try things and, you know, sort of play with different things, but, but I am just sort of interested to see what, yeah, what Carvalho can do, what, what, you know, Nunez is going to do. And then just, you know, even to say, maybe see some different ways that we might use um, Diaz across the front three. So all in all, I just think it's exciting. I mean, it's, again, it's sad to see the players that have been, you know, pieces of this unit, you know, and again, especially Sadio move on, but I am interested to see, you know, what what bringing the new guys in is is going to do and what it's going to bring. You know, it is exciting. Um, well, I think what we'll do, because Cam, you alluded to, to it earlier on, and it's actually a, it's a fine point. Uh, I, I, I would like to talk about the Mo Salah situation, but it's nearly a show in itself. And maybe we'll just give it that extra week or two and see if anything happens by way of breakthroughs uh, before we start committing to it as a topic because it's massively interesting and depending on what happens there i think it very much changed the tone of the show uh and the discussion um so we might just leave that sit there and come back to that topic around mo if and when we get any further information but lisa marie to stay with you on the next little thing that i wanted to look at was and we can keep this actually pretty brief I'd ask you guys, what was it that you wanted versus what you thought was likely when it comes to the remainder of the window? Now, I think I framed this up by saying that uh, the Oracle, that is Joycey, has pretty much told us uh, that that's us done for the summer now. And the accepted wisdom that we're looking at signing a midfield player next season. Now, I know that that is going to drive a huge amount of people absolutely batshit mental, Lisa Marie, because they don't want to hear about next season. And they don't want to hear about anything like that. And I would be possibly amongst those people because it's my personal opinion that given the profile of all the various people that we have in our midfield department uh, between aging and injury, it's and, and, and still being very much potential, uh, I it's my firm belief that we needed a starter with energy and attacking uh, impetus. And I think it's borderline stupid to not make that move this summer. That's my take. And I, I, I don't hold back on, on transfer opinions when it comes to stuff like that. I said it about a centre half a couple of years ago. I said it about attacker before that. And, and I think in both cases, this season proved me to be kind of pretty much on the ball in terms of that. And I, I think that's the big area that we need. I, I don't believe in this have faith nonsense. I want to look at the statistics and I want to look at what's actually happened with players uh, uh, over the course of the season and availability and performance. And for me, then that means a midfielder. But again, just because I think that doesn't mean anyone else has to agree with me. And uh, people might be listening to this thinking I'm talking absolute nonsense. If you could have your pick, what would you like to do by way of recruitment? Just briefly. And then will you just top it off, top it off by saying what you think is likely? Uh, and I'll go then to Carl and then to Cam on, the, on that same question. I agree with you, Trev. I think we do need a starting mid 
midfielder, not someone that we can mold into, you know, midfielder of the future. I think we need someone who can step into the team. However, on the flip side, I don't want to sign someone for the sake of signing someone. You know, I want us to sign someone who is the right fit. I don't know who that is. I mean, I do listen to the various transfer pods and everything, but at this point in time, those names are all just a jumble. So, um, yeah, and, and I've said this in the past. I don't think we need to sign people for the sake of saying, oh, look, we've signed somebody. But I, I think you're right. I think the injuries that we saw in midfield at the beginning of last season show us that we could use some some additional depth there. But I think it needs to be somebody who can step into the team, you know, pretty much from the get go. Yeah. Absolutely. And is would that that would be your dream target would be someone that who would fit that bill. Yes. And yes. if and now, if likely, that, that that that's obviously that's what that's what you'd like, but what do you think is likely? I don't know. I I mean part of me thinks I, I'm kind of split fifty fifty. You know, I, I mean I, I do laugh at the people who get all kind of freaked out. I mean, it was like the second week of June and they were like, That's it, that's all I can't that's all we're getting. I'm like, it's the second week of June. I mean, the window doesn't close until like what, the is it September first, end of August, something like that. Um so I don't know. I mean, obviously you want someone here for preseason and all of that, but um, I don't know. I mean, I think the further we get into the window, the less likely it is to happen. However, we've seen surprises, you know, um, Jada would be an excellent example of, of stuff that happens, you know, toward the end of the window without us expecting it. So, but I, I don't know. I'm, I think it's maybe a 50, 50 shot at this point. Okay, I'm I'm hearing cautious optimism. I'm gonna go with that. Carl, if you if you if you get yeah, your pick, um, your, optimism. There you go. My default. There you go. Uh, Mick, uh, Carl, your 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 chosen area to do some recruiting in, if you could get one or two in, where 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 or who would it be? And do you think that's likely now? I mean, how how much store do you place in the um the 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 the, the, the Joycey cult? Um. <sighs> We're getting relegated. No, it's um, <laughs> it just go the way on that. I would say, yeah, I mean, I mean Milner's getting obviously Milner's got to get a new contract. We're not going to get minutes. I think that's a that's a bridge into his um, his coaching career. Um, Henderson's obviously older now as well. They're all older now. In fact, the entire midfield is pretty old. Um, so I, I think there will be a midfielder. I think when you look at what Paul Joyce has said, I, I did a, a show once with Jonathan Norcroft. Uh, at the time, who says something really interesting to me. He said, the thing is that you've got to realise is when a club says, yes, we're bringing in this person or we're looking at this person or now we're not doing anything at all, that can change on an hour by hour basis, literally by one comment made by someone in a boardroom somewhere. And then suddenly everything's on again. I mean, there must have been so many um, transfers which have been going, 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 you know, absolutely not happening at all or the other way around. Uh, for example, Trev, you and I often but despite being very young, the pair of us um, talk about um, uh, Michael Laudrup's transfer to Liverpool in the 80s. On, 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 yeah. on, on. No, blew it. Goes that way. So when um, when Paul says, like, you know, it, it's looking like that it won't be, I think that at things as, as things stand, that's the case. But it doesn't mean that someone's going to go, Do you know, I think I'll go to Liverpool. Um, so I would like a midfielder and I'm just wondering if the the thing about the Genie Wijnaldum thing at the moment is whether the club are saying we do need someone in midfield and you guess he's in his 30s too but he knows the club um, you know and isn't going to sit on the bench which I think some of the new lads will do for a bit just until they get ready for the system um, or or we've got someone in mind but if we've got someone in mind who's going to come in later or next season I think they might be interested in just putting someone there for a bit, get through this season, and then announce the 24-year-old one, the kid, um, sitting things are done. Um, I think it will be a, mid, a midfielder, but I'm just, I really, I really want to say it's an Avery. I don't know, he's a forward. Well, I, oh, okay, I'll, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, yeah, I want that. Yeah, like that my yeah. A lot of people very excited by that possibility. Um, I actually love what you've just suggested because we could finally solve the problem of who's going to fill in the Ginny minutes. Ginny, uh, that would be great. <laughs> he's that good. Uh, he's that good. He's that, 
Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's the, 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 that. That a, a great show and a very exciting prospect. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think a lot of people will be on board with you there. Um, Cam, let's round it up. Uh, uh, this topic here with you. I mean, dream, dream recruit uh, versus your take on the likelihood of more recruitment. Um. Well. It it's obviously has to be a midfielder of some sort, um, and a midfielder who is young, fit, and healthy, um, who can play to the intensity that's required of a Klopp system. Um, it's also going to have to be in a midfielder who's going to um, has the ability to be um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Evolve as the team evolves, because Klopp has always changed how the team plays pretty much season on season. He, he doesn't like to keep it the same because you become predictable, you become stale, and teams work you out. Um, it's something Pep Linders alluded to in an interview uh, a couple of uh, summers ago. We have to keep changing it. So for us to then say possibly go back to Ginny, to get the Ginny minutes in, I'm not sure that's the answer, but I understand why you'd want Ginny there if we can't get the the midfielder you want. I, I understand the logic behind it. I don't think it would be the right move for what the club want to achieve going forwards, but I wouldn't be against it at the same time, you know, just to sit on the fence with that one. We wanted Chiumeni from Monaco. I, I think that was pretty common knowledge. Uh, we were completely blown out of the water by Madrid with what they offered to Monaco and offered to the player. And there was no way we were going to compete with that. With, uh, my understanding was the deal was pretty much agreed. It, it was almost at medical stage. So we, we were definitely looking at midfielders. There's been talk that Julian Ward has been to Dortmund and has spoken to Dortmund. Uh, subsequently after what happened with uh, Chirmeni. So that would then suggest that possibly the club are looking at Jude Bellingham. But are Dortmund likely to let Jude Bellingham Bellingham go in the same window as Haaland? No chance. I'd be very, very surprised if they had allowed two of their biggest players to leave in, in the one window. But saying that, Dortmund have signed a midfielder who would be the replacement for Jude Bellingham. So, is something happening there? And it's like Carl says, you, we just don't know. We just don't know what is going on day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, because something could change just like that. It could just ch- change just like that. And I know we want shiny new toys all the time, but we've seen the way this club operates if they want somebody and that somebody is prepared to come to us we will wait to get that someone because that someone is right for the club and it's like lisa marie says don't make a signing for the sake of the signing sake if we had signed a center back that summer and then not got virgil van dyke on December the 28th, when it was announced, whenever it was, who would have been the bigger fools then? So that's where I'm going to leave that. Absolutely fair. Um, I, I, th- I think you're right. I, I personally hold my hand up and say that I love buying new stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm buying a new stuff junkie, to be perfectly honest. I'll openly admit that. But the only shiny thing that I'm really, really concerned about at the end of the year is a, is a trophy. And I, I think we need a midfielder to, 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 to make it the best chance of getting one of the big two over the line next campaign. And it's, it's all I want. It's all I want for this team, this iteration of Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp, is to win the freaking trophies that this team, this uh, era, warrants and we haven't we haven't got enough of them we haven't got enough of the big ones i understand what we've won i've enjoyed it more than anybody but we need 
to win more. Uh, and I, I, I really hope that, that the club addresses that midfield issue before the end of the summer so we can possibly have a go at it next season. And, and, and that's none, none of that is to belittle the players we have because if things break the right way with the injury situations and all the rest of it, then we'll be absolutely fine with midfield. But I just don't like that if scenario when it comes to my club because I feel a little bit uh, I feel like it, we've, we should be past that and I, I think we kind of are in many ways now I want to do one last funny question um, for, uh, with you which is uh, inspired by a, a conversation that's been going on over and back that I've been tagged in um, where people are talking about their favourite player and who was the, the best and it's an age old discussion uh, we all have our our concepts of who are the top players that we've seen or who are the best players ever to play for Liverpool. And, you know, we can only have certain opinions based on video evidence with uh, some of the players in the past. And if you go back far enough, we don't even have that. So, for example, I have no idea how wonderful Billy Little was. And I'd love to have ample evidence to go and peruse. I don't. I don't know how good Elisha Scott was, uh, because of, where am I going to see that? Uh, I, I've got very well, little... How old are you, Trev? What's that? How old are you this week? Oh, I, I, sadly, I had my birthday during the week. and everybody... say Trev had a birthday this week, too. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, every, so everybody knows now that I'm actually, uh, I'm 34, and it's, uh, like, I'm getting on a bit, but, you know, I, I have to be honest about it. Uh, so, basically, what I'm saying to you is, your favourite player... Is the one. It's going to be the one that you, that you kind of imprinted on as a fan. The one that is the most special for you, and it doesn't necessarily equate with who's going to be in the top ten. Because as, as Carl said earlier on, quite wisely, you know, how do you make the, those? So they're very subjective choices, and people start bumping fellas out in favor of other fellas and all the rest of it. So I have a simple question for you, uh, all three of you. Uh, Cam, I finish with you, so I'll start with you on this one. Who is the player? the Liverpool player, who has basically been meant the most to you, who's been your favourite Liverpool player, the one who just made, made made the most difference to you. You know, earlier on today, we had several people talking about Luis Suarez and other people saying there wasn't enough of a sample size and they were missing the point. They were missing the point that this is a subjective decision based on your feelings about that player. So who has had the most impact on you as a football fan wearing the red shirt? Oh, blimey. Where do I start now? I mean, Mo Salah has been phenomenal. Virgil van Dijk has been phenomenal for us. Luis Suarez for two seasons was head and shoulders above everybody in the world. Um. Fernando Torres broke my heart because I'd never seen a striker like him. Robbie Fowler was God. Steven Gerrard carried that team for 10 years. Kenny was amazing. John Barnes, John Barnes for two years. Nobody could touch him. Nobody could get the ball off him. He, he was a wizard. He was an absolute wizard. Adam Lallana? Yay! It's been a long just, time. Just, just for old times, like <laughs> it's I'm surprised you did say Jordan Henderson, to be honest, but we won't. I go was going to say John Alarisa, but John Alarisa, definitely. Big fan of mine, John. Yeah, well, John Alarisa and Bellamy need to learn to play golf together, don't they? Um, I don't know why I thought of that. I saw something with Bellamy earlier. That's that's why that came in my. But the, the the player that, if it comes down to the player that really, really made me sit up and notice and think, wow. And it's the one player my dad used to say, he scored again, hasn't he? And I'll be like, yeah, dad, he scored again. And it was Ian Rush. Yeah. It was just, he just, he was just amazing at what he did. He was just phenomenal. Him and Doug Leach were just, they were, They'll like everything you've seen since with, you know, with the, with the, with the wonderful front three we had, you know, that's just, just now broken up. You know, it was poetry in motion. They, they were synced. They were in tune. They, they just worked so well together. And until that, I think it was a league cup final. Whenever Rush scored, we never lost. Yeah. And, and you know, and you, and you, it was a great feeling knowing that. 
up until that point. We weren't going to lose this game because Rushley scored again. It was the 87 Littlewoods Cup final against Little Arsenal. Well, well, I'll, 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 I'll never forget the, the horror. Week, it wasn't. I think it was 2-1 yeah. we lost. So, uh, yeah. 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 And it was just like, for fuck's sake, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, yeah, right. I mean, he's the one who really, really influenced me as a Liverpool fan, really made me sit up and take notice. I mean, we didn't see enough live games, but it was like the two cup finals against the Ev, and he scored. You knew we'd won. You just knew it because he scored. And it's just, just not that that was the thing, but that was a big part of it. And he was just phenomenal for me. You know, he set me up perfectly. Rushy's a great shout. And of course, like you mentioned, um, dovetails so well with my personal choice, who'd be the king himself. I, I've... I've never, ever had uh, an opinion of a player as high as I had of Kenny Dalglish, uh, and I didn't see half enough of him. Uh, that's the sad part about it. I, I miss so many of his of his good years by just not being able to see the games on TV and not, that, yeah. and, 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 and not being able to go to the freaking games. Yeah. But because... Uh, poverty. Uh, so, so basically, I, 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 I but, but what this, the sample size that I saw, like I said, was enough. The greatest moment in my football sporting, uh, football uh, uh, supporting career is Kenny's goal at Stamford Bridge to win the league. The majesty of that, the significance of that. We, we spoke on this show several times about Roy of the Rovers comic. That was real, Roy of the Rovers. He's fucking player manager and he's doing that stuff. It's bananas. It'll never be equaled. No one will ever do anything like that, ever. And so for that reason and that reason alone, uh, if none, if nothing else, but also literally everything I ever saw him doing on a, on a football pitch was just poetry in motion. You know, beautiful, beautiful player to watch. Uh, and, uh, and and by far, by far, by quite a distance, um, my, my favourite player uh, ever to put on a Liverpool shirt. For that reason, though, um, and I'm, I'm aware, Lisa Marie, you're, you've got, the four of the three old farts here talking away about back in the day so you'll have to excuse us uh i i, I hope none of it is exclusionary uh compared to you know the the comparative uh, uh, uh brevity of the time that you've been obsessed with the club and it, it doesn't come across by the way can i just say that i often meant to say that and i never did because I, I always say it just for context to let people know how long you've been sporting and that kind of stuff because i think it's it's relevant but it, honest to god it, it never comes across because you know yourself so much in your time watching Liverpool play who's the player that's really impacted on you yeah I was gonna say if if nothing else I love listening to you I'll talk about this it makes me jealous um you know for for not having the opportunity to have followed the club as, as long as you have but Anyway, you know, it's probably Mo Salah, just because he's been the player the most who has just made me, you know, catch my breath. Yeah. And the things that he has done. Um, yeah. It, but again, you know, I mean, I, I could sit and name, you know, the whole team, you know, Sadio and Bobby Firmino. And I mean, you know, I could rattle all their names off because, you know, they've all been so good in so many, you know, different ways and in different contributions. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, if I've got to kind of pick one, um, it, it, like just because he, you know, he never ceases to amaze me the things that he can do with the football. So yeah, but you know, if I have I, to pick my favorite player from like a personality point of view, can I, yes. can I do it from that yeah, way too? Yes, I mean, absolutely. And, and again, they're all a wonderful group of, you know, they're just a great group of guys. But the player that I just kind of take, I just sort of enjoy him, you know, as a personality as much as as a player, and and there's kind of personal reasons for that, um, is Andy Robertson. And and the reason for that is he reminds me in some ways of of my own brother, whose name was Andrew, um, you know, that that we lost several years ago when he was when he was 22, but. He was a defender as well. Um, he usually played um, sweeper, but but there's something about the tenacity of of Andy Robertson and you know what he does, you know what he's made up for with maybe 
lack of skill sounds harsh, but I think I know what you're saying in hard work. You know, he he took and he, he pushed and pushed to do, you know, to, to make it where he wanted to go. And, and my own brother had had a little bit of that in him um, also. So and I think, too, because. The time that I really started watching the team was about the time that Andy Robertson broke through. So um, so I think that's kind of as, as a personal favorite. It's Robo. Oh, he's a great chef. I love that. I love that. I like the personal connection too. And Carl, I, I have a feeling, because I know we've talked about this before, even on this show, that Lisa Marie's thing of like, you know, favorite player versus like objectively the best player you've seen. You've often dr- drawn that line. Uh, I wonder, are you going to do it again? Yeah. Andrew Knott, who does the um, the mosaics on the cop, um, um, said to me once, that his um, his favourite player was Kenny Daglish and his hero is Ray Kennedy, and um, I it, that was such a lovely thing to hear because I thought I've been trying to sum up what that is between the two of them in my life and that was it. Um, I'm going to be a bit different, I think, just because I'm always going on about Ray, um, and I'm going to say Kenny to be honest as well. But El had to do funny. Had two years at Liverpool. <laughs> 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 but uh, it's partnership yeah. with Sean Dundee now. Um, that lad could uh, spit. That lad could spit. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All his goals against the same club. That's quite interesting. We're playing Southampton again. El Hadj. Oh, I'll turn up for this one. Yeah. Anyone you need spitting on in the crowd? Uh, go on. Then. Um, uh, I'd, I'd have to say Barnes, just yeah. because um, I'd been going regularly for about two, three years at that point. Because I mean, I, I, I'd go, but not go quite as much as I did then. And, and to be to go to, the, to I think I went to all but one of the Bulls home games that season, and just his first, paying, yeah, you're paying the money to see him. I mean, this is a team with Peter Beasley in it for God's sake, and Peter Beasley was relegated to number two, and no one thought it was going to work. And people don't mention that very often about Barnes because he did say, "Come and get me, Arsenal or Spurs." He wanted to stay in the south, and um, we were all going mad about Beasley because he's a record signing, and like you know, he made, he made no secret of the fact that two years earlier that he wanted to come and play for us, and he played number seven, and we've got him, and then suddenly this blizzard comes onto the pitch, and Alan Hansen always just says about that, so he says we, we were brilliant, but all we had, all we did was give him the ball. That's all we had to do, and in the days of the standing cup, you get in, I'd say about an hour to an hour and fifteen. Just to make sure you're getting in for a start, people were getting in three hours early, just to make sure they were in the ground to see him. And that's one of the, that's one of the times where you just think this is football on a level I'm not used to. And the closest I've been to that since is a man I don't like is Luis Suarez. I was I was at the game that you know the five one against Norwich, the famous four goals one, and and I've written about this so often, so I'm sorry sorry to anyone who's heard me say this, but the third goal he scores. He's laughing. He's running backwards and he's got his hands on across his mouth and he's laughing at Gerard running towards him. And he's saying, I don't know. I don't know how I've done that. And it's his third goal in 15 minutes. He got four that night. And on the fourth goal, uh, they'd had uh, Sterling got the other one. I remember that. On the fourth goal, they'd all had free kicks. All the, all the main free kick takers have had, have had free kicks. He's got his hat trick, so he's happy as he is. We've won the game. And Everyone's whacking it over the bar or, you know, getting deflections or not going anywhere at all. And Suarez says, go on, can I just... And that's when he got his fourth goal. And there's a game against Cardiff City. I did a podcast on um, about about that the day after. He got two goals. And his first goal was like a volley from 12 yards, first time, side of the foot, in off the post. And um, um, a mutual friend of ours said, it's his worst goal of the season. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it was like that, honestly. I mean... The game where he heads the ball in from outside the area, and he doesn't even jump; he just runs onto it against West Brom. Look that up if you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, it's Luis Suarez headed goal against West Brom. It should be made illegal, and I think, obviously, because of my age, I'm going to go to Ray and Souness and people like that, Gerard, Torres, uh, but Barnes and Suarez were the first t- time I've got, I've seen football go somewhere else recently. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a lovely thing to say. It is, and, and, and Lisa Marie's right. Mo Salah has done it in, in, in latter days for us, where you're sitting there just the in your the mouth. Goal against Chelsea, the, the, the goal against Chelsea from, from the, from the throw-in line, pretty much. 
over there was the most I've seen my 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 uh, brother-in-law celebrate a goal. Like yeah. I couldn't believe what he'd just seen. The goal against Man City this season, by the way, and Watford by Salah. Little word about them too. They were just ridiculous. Nobody else can do, could could have done that in world football at that moment in time and that's that's why I, I, I know I've come across a little bit harsh I just want them to keep doing that for the rest of the season because that yeah. meant we, we would have walked the quadruple absolutely walked it <laughs> yeah. um, but there we are that's what it is what it is is what it is and we are actually on the hour so uh, I will pull it to you my friends do you want to do one last question which is non footy or do you want to just get out of here with outros do you have something that you want to do at the end of the show? Because if you do, we'll do that instead. Does anybody have anything that they wanted to plug or any final thoughts that they want to specifically mention? Just just shout, literally. I've, I've got a plug. Yes, no. Well, but I'm happy to do another question. Well. Yeah, I'd rather do one of the questions because I don't really have a specific outro. Okay, well, we will do the we will do the specific question. I'll say goodbye to everyone and make sure and remind me, Carl, so we can get your plug in at the end. Uh, the last the question that I wanted to ask you is. Um, Again, relevant because uh, I was fixing up my barbecue there earlier on um, to see if I can uh, get it fired up and get it used over the next uh, couple of weeks, hopefully. And I'm lucky there because I've, I have a few things that are actually growing that I'm going to be able to throw on it. And that's it's a pretty cool feeling. That said, I don't know if it'd be necessarily what I'd serve up to you if you were coming around here uh, for uh, an AIP uh, staff barbecue. So this is the question. AIP staff barbecue. You're wearing the apron. What are you serving me? And I want you just to pick one thing. You don't 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 talk to me about a spread. What is it? What's the first thing you're thinking of that's going on that on that grill or on that barbecue uh, that you think you can do a half decent job on? And Cam, I'm going to start with you because famously Mrs. B is the one who does all the uh, cooking in, uh, mm-hmm. in your house. However, don't don't all blokes in a cliched way sort of say, hey, hey, I can do the I can do I this can barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> so with that with that in mind, uh, what would be what are you serving me? Uh, Bearing in mind, everyone, being Cam and his dietary choices, this could go anywhere. This could literally go anywhere. And, <laughs> and by the way, uh, by the way, Cop, I, I, I've got my eye on you as well, because I'm presuming it's going to be some vegetarian dish. So with this in mind, Cam, what is it you're serving to the three of us at our staff summer barbecue? Just so you know, I do do the barbecue in the brain chair. When we <laughs> of course do you do. Of course do. you do. No, genuinely, I do. I, do. I, I believe you. I believe Mrs. You. B says, no, barbecue, that's your job. And I'm like, damn. Um, <laughs> because you need to do it. I will be serving a Beyond Meat burger. Dude, what are you doing to me? <laughs> <laughs> what were you? You were expecting something outrageous, weren't you? No, I just, I can't get behind this fake meat shit. But go ahead, go ahead. Tell Trust me. me. Tell Tell Trust me how me. good it is. Go Trev, on. Trev, when you have this, I mean, is there I'm, only, I'm only a recent convert to. Is there soybeans in it? It, it? Honestly, it is. I can genuinely say it's the best burger I've ever ever eaten. And that includes all the meat burgers I've ever eaten. It is Does that it, good. Is it? Is it, has, not, it got cr- has it got crickets in it? No. <laughs> You're not trying to make me eat crickets and, and bugs, are you? No? Would I do that to you, Trev? I don't know. That's, the world is trying to get me to do that, as far as I can see. So, so yeah, okay. The world's so, trying to turn you into a monkey with polio so, at the moment. So don't worry true. about that. That's Let's true. not go down that rabbit hole. No, no. Yeah? So, so, so uh, beyond, you're calling it beyond meat. Beyond meat. meat. I, right. I'm telling you, it, it is, I can, I've, I've had burgers in my life, honestly. Yeah, because I used to love my burgers. And that would be beef burgers, chicken burgers, fillet of fish burgers, whatever you want to say. Yeah, you know, I used to love a chicken royale from Burger King. I used to love a flame grill, you know, uh, from Burger King as well. Uh, loved a Five Guys burger. They were really good. Oh, All right, enough uh, enough plugs. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. uh, they're not going to sponsor us, mate. Well, so, so, you know, so we've got to try, haven't we? We've been trying you, for years. We tried for with spam for years, but yeah. it never worked. What are you? What are you? Uh, what are you garnishing this Beyond Meat thing with? Um, you're going you're gonna to get cheese. You're going to get relish. Um, some lettuce in there. 
Um, if, you, if, you, if you want some onions in there as well, we can get some onions in there, garnish it with that, some uh, some fried onions perhaps. It, you will not be disappointed. You Selection of mayos and sauces. Nice. Uh, nice, nice, nice bun as well. You know, you, you've got to get the bun right as well. It's got to be a good bun. It's got to be a good Did you just tell me I've got nice buns? I don't know. Have you, Trev? I do, yes. So, <laughs> nice buns, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> Please put a yes. cover between buns and Downey there. <laughs> No, no, no. Oh it's, all about, it's all about the punctuation. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, by the way, by the way, can I, yeah. uh, can, can, can I get a beer? You're yeah, not going to, you're not going to no, give no, me a, a non-alcoholic beer to go with this. No, no, I mean, I mean, I still drink, not very often, but I have. I don't drink. care about you drinking. I'm asking, no, no. can I have? Will, will yeah, you you can have a, beer? You'll have a beer. <laughs> okay. You, you, I'm not, I'm not putting the beer on the barbecue, Trev. The beer will come from the fridge. <laughs> right. oh, I love, so I love you the idea of barbecue. Now you're going to beer. Come on, Trev. I love you're the idea of having a barbecue it being in charge of beverages or a little bar area to say, no, no, I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, well, can I have one? No, I don't drink that much, to be honest. Oh, can I have one, can I? <laughs> yeah, Brainy's house rules. Uh, okay. Oh, fine, oh, thanks. You did, you oh, see, it's all turned against me. You ask me why I'm cooking, I give you why I'm cooking, and suddenly it's attacked Brainy again. Well, no, nothing changes on this pod, does it? <laughs> no, never will. Never will. <laughs> Uh, Lisa Marie, uh, we've seen uh, Instagram evidence of some of your creations. We know you're uh, quite adept in the baking department and the cooking department. So have you got any surprise up your sleeve for the uh, staff barbecue that we're going to have this summer? You know, I thought I would go with a full kind of southern theme um, just, you know, to give you all a little taste of, of, you know, southern living, if you will. Um, so I was going to do dry rub pork ribs um, with potato salad, a tomato cucumber or salad, and fresh peach cobbler for dessert. Oof. Peach cobbler. I like the sound of a peach cobbler. <laughs> now, I've <laughs> watched I've said those words. I've watched a lot of, of these um extreme barbecue shows that you can see on Netflix. They fascinate me. People getting these big coal fired burners up and running and it's all about the quality of the coals and the wood that are used and the smoke created and all that. Uh, talk to me a little bit about this. What did you what what was the meat dish again? Just six what would you call it something a, 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 what rub? What was it? Well oh it was it's um it's called dry rub. So dry rub, yeah. you know for, so instead of you know a lot of times when people make ribs, you know, they're slathering them in barbecue sauce. And they call those wet ribs. See I don't like that. I like the dry rub where it's more um, it's more seasoning. And, yes, um, yes. Yeah. So that would be my choice as far as, uh, um, yeah. And for me, uh, you know, it's also all about how you season it, marinate it. That 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 makes the difference. So, I but I can't reveal this. my secret. I love this. And by the way, by the way, I will be uh, while you're cooking, I will make my way into that uh, uh, little cabinet you've got. We've stored up all that uh, booze over the last few years. So (laughs) you'll find me you'll find me in there if you're looking. Well, you know, I mean, I was thinking, you know, definitely we'd have an assortment of beverages, you know, maybe some, you know, chilled beer, um, probably mix up a batch of Lynchburg lemonade. And um, yeah, I don't know. Something else, maybe. Lynchburg lemonade. That sounds like it's got a kick, does it? Well, it's it's a drink using Jack Daniels because Jack Daniels is in Lynch, <laughs> Lynchburg, Tennessee. So yeah. <laughs> ah, wow. That's I brilliant. told you, I had I've a never whole theme going here. Whole theme. I mean, I figured if you lads are coming over it. here, I've got to, you know, let you immerse yourself in the culture. Well, uh, what can we say except yeehaw? I would love that. <laughs> uh, Anytime, Carl, anytime, y'all are welcome. <laughs> you're you're up, uh, you're up, Chef Kopak. Uh, we're coming around yours uh, for summer Barbie goodness. Uh, are you going to go full branchy and say it's Kopak rules? That means you're only getting vegetables, or what way does this work? Well, you're not you're not getting any roadkill, so sort that. Um, I don't believe in animals are our friends. Um, apart from <laughs> tuna. 
I do like a tuna. I do like a tuna steak. Oh wow! <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have many dealings with tuna, so they're fine. Uh, bear in mind, I live yeah. in the countryside now, like yourself, Trev. So um, you know, animals are our friend. Um, and um, yeah, I like a tuna steak, and you're getting an extra garnish of red onion on top of that because red onion is the greatest of all the onions, in my opinion. Um, yes. And I think I would serve that to you with a nice Beaver Town neck oil. <laughs> what no? For your beer. Oh yeah, be- be- Beaver Town beer. I'm gonna say I'm assuming that's a local. Uh, it is, yeah, beverage. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's an IPA. And um, oh, it, no, I should I should have known. Should have known you'd go all, all right. craft craft all right, beer nonsense. I'll dig out a can of Kestrel for you. From somewhere. Nice one. Nice one. Uh, Rachie's on the skull. Uh, <laughs> Lisa Marie, I'll get you some WKD. Um, sorry, I, didn't, I, I think I might be a bit too more, much royalty for this um, particular thing there. Although, of course, I am a big fan of Krug Champagne because I've, I've heard, Trev, it really does quench your thirst. That's Krug it does. Champagne. Krug, sh- Krug Champagne. Yes. Yeah. So uh, just, just again, in case. That's Krug Champagne. Get in touch at Anfield Index. (laughs) Yeah. Go fuck that. Get in touch at Downey Trev on Twitter. Hit me up, lads. (laughs) Just put you lads out later, yeah. (laughs) I I will. I'll I'll pass it on. If I can remember your names within an hour's time, I'll let you know. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. On that shamelessly uh, shamelessly uh, self-promoting and commercial note, we will finish before we do some more sh- shameless uh, promotion just by getting whatever it was you wanted to plug, Carl, to finish the show. So I, as you know, Trev, because you've been on it, I run a host of podcasts called Sherlock from Adela to Amberley, which is an attempt to um, examine all 56 of the Sherlock Holmes short stories in order. Um, and uh, Trev's been on it for a story called The Noble Bachelor. And we're just coming up to the big two, the right in the middle, which are the final problem where Holmes meets Moriarty and they both fall off the right and back falls and die. Um, And the empty house where Sherlock comes back. So we want to do something a bit special with this. So we had a guest on a man called Leslie Klinger, who is well known in the Sherlock um, Holmes realm because he uh, did the annotated, the curator, the annotated Sherlock Holmes. And um, he's going to come on to the show. And based one of my writing heroes, a man called Bert Cools, who wrote a lot of the um, radio, BBC Radio 4 adaptations of Sherlock Holmes, uh, including The Final Problem and The Empty House. And we're going to do it as a live event on um, on, on Twitter. Sorry, on, on, I think it's on Zoom. And, and producer John, who, who, who Trev knows, is, uh, is, is sorting all this out. And if you want to come and watch this, it's basically it's going to be a live at me talking to the gents with a Q&A afterwards. If you've got any interest in Sherlock Holmes whatsoever, it'd be really nice to have you here. Um, I'm at the Sensi on Twitter or at Adler2, A-D-L-E-R-T-O, uh, which is the Sherlock one. If you want to sign up and join us on the 16th of July at 5 p.m., you're more than welcome. And I apologise about the fan- Six. Here about of fanboy work that's going to go through me and Bert Cools at the time. Oh, it sounds tremendous. 16th of July, 5 p.m. July, for this, 5 p.m. It's got uh, to be 5 p.m. because um, Leslie's an American and he's got stuff to do in the day. Uh, I, I, that sounds fantastic. I'm delighted. I really, really hope that goes brilliantly for you. And I certainly will make it a point to be uh, uh, line, lined up to, 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 to watch and listen. And I presume there'll be, John will be doing live tweeting and there'll probably be a little bit of interaction possibly as well. But the Q&A sounds excellent too. So we yeah, will... we've been trying to get um, all the, um, I'm going to send that a separate email to all everyone who's been on the show as a guest before, because people tend to come back as well. We've just done a show with Bonnie McBird, who wrote the film Tron, um, to, to discuss uh, the Naval Treaty. Um, and um, it'd be really nice to have the old guest on, so I was going to mention this to you anyway. Fantastic. Sounds like an absolute blast, and I hope I hope it's a, a huge success for you guys. We have gone long here, so I'm going to wrap it up with that uh, by saying thanks to Carl, thanks to Cam, and thanks to Lisa Marie. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm fa- famously we do we do plugs and things like this at the end, but I wanted to finish the show today with a review that got sent to me. I say review, it was some weirdo who found me on Twitter and gave this review 
of Malby on the spot. And it goes as follows. Trev Downey likes the sound of his own voice so much. You get 10 minutes of Jan Malby, 50 minutes of this school teacher waffling about nothing. Pretty good, I think. I might put that on the uh, homepage for the website. <laughs> That's the title of the show. We should... <laughs> This waffling school teacher, yes, please. Wow. Tremendous, tremendous. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going with nice buns for the title, just in case you're listening yeah, I'm sure to this you are, yeah. uh, Not for the first time. <laughs> oh, no, but they will, they will, they will. <laughs> No, not for the first time. Do you know what? I'm going. We're going. We got to finish up. We, we get, I, I've, I've rambled too long. I've let this go long. I'm sorry. It's an hour and 15 minutes. But you know what? It was a good hour and 15 minutes. So thanks to Carl, to Cam, to Lisa Marie. And we will speak to you guys again very, very soon. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement. And we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash Discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.